All right, guys, it is Sunday. I just got off work and figured I'd make you guys a video. Um, I have been piddling with the car a little bit after work. My goal, I'm just going to let you guys know right now, my goal for next Saturday is to have this thing ready to go, uh, have the nitrous on it, have it all hooked up. And the plan is next Saturday, we are going to take Chaos Theory here and the DR Nova to English Mountain Raceway and just do some test and tune. Maybe me and Ray race each other, uh, you know, just have some fun. So letting you guys know if you're local, um, as long as the weather holds out, we are going to be up there next Saturday. Now, even beyond that, I want to kind of let you guys know some things that are going on, uh, some plans that have changed with the car already. You guys know from day one, my goal was to try to get the factory gauges working, at least for now. Guys, I'm fighting these things. I bought the converter box I showed you guys. Then I went back and I decided to go a different route, uh, route with the tack and order this little chip from, uh, I think it's called Cajun. What, what is that place called? Cajun Tack Shop, and they actually, they make a little programmable chip. Here's a sticker there. But they make this little programmable trip, and it's got a, or trip, <laughs> chip, and it's got a potentiometer in it. And they make them for these Camaros, they make them for older Corvettes, C10s, everything, if you're having uh, tack problems. Uh, and the little potentiometer allows you to dial the tack in. Now, I decided to go that route instead of the little box just because I didn't want to have as many wires and I wasn't really worried about the speedometer because the speedometer at 110 miles an hour obviously is not going to be enough for this car anyway. What has happened since then is we took the car out two nights ago, Friday night. Uh, me and the wife just went for a cruise, guys. Uh, I just wanted to cruise it around, let the Holly get the fuel in dialed in, which apparently it already had it dialed in like just in a couple miles i drove it the day before i mean this holly is great guys i'm just telling you uh but anyway it got dark while we were cruising and i went to turn my headlights on well when i turn my headlights on the gauges just go all haywire the tack max is out um well they all go haywire the freaking temperature starts going nuts it's just you know i have no idea what's causing that and to make matters worse I got online and I saw that this is a common problem uh, with you know with these later model uh, third gens, not only with the LS swapped ones, but you know just the bone stock ones in general. There are just so many different things that could cause it. Anything from bad grounds to corroded uh, circuit print or printed circuit boards. Um, it's just not something I really want to deal with. And because I never drove this car at night before I swapped it, I don't even know if this is an issue that could be related to my rewire for the LS swap or if it already had this problem before because I never turned the headlights on uh, the few times that I drove it when it still had the V6 in it. So what I've decided to do at this point is I'm probably going to sell the, uh, the tack chip that I was just telling you guys about. I'm gonna sell it real cheap if somebody needs that. Uh, let me know. And I want to say something else that that allows you to do is to convert a V6 tack to run with a V8 uh, signal. So uh, if anybody's interested in the chip, it was $44 new. Uh, I'll probably sell it for like $30 shipped or something, you know, as long as the shipping don't kill me. Um, and then the Bluetooth box that I have, I'm probably going to hold on to that because I have another project in mind down the road that I might be using that for. But anyway, what I've decided to do for now is I'm just gonna go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just gonna go ahead and I've got an old auto meter, five inch tack. Uh, I'm just gonna mount that under the dash for now, hook that up just so I can race next Saturday because you know, I do, I, I do have full manual in this Turbo 350, so I have to shift it myself, so I need a tack. And I think what I'm probably going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and look at probably getting the, uh, the Holly Pro Dash 6.86 or whatever it is. I can't fit the 7 in my dash. It physically will not fit. I've already measured. I've talked to some people about it. It won't fit. Uh, so I'm going to have to get the six point whatever dash that they have, which is like a thousand dollars. 
But as an added bonus, one thing I was worried about is with this HP, and it's the same for you guys with Terminator X, uh, you've only got four ins and outs. Well, that Holly Pro Dash actually gives you the ability to have like four more outputs and I think 10 inputs. So that'll come in real handy, you know, with the nitrous later on with the turbo. Uh, if I want to read additional sensors, things like that. So it's not just, you know, it's not just for looks. Uh, to be honest, I think it's going to look kind of cheesy anyway, being so small back there in the dash. But uh, it's going to give me a lot of information. I'm not going to have to screw around with these gauges that honestly aren't very accurate, even if I do get them working. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of going to kill not two birds with one stone, but about five birds with one stone. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to save up my money for that or... You know, I may just finance it. I mean, you can buy online through PayPal and pay like, you know, $40, $50 a month or something. Uh, I may go that route just so I can go ahead and get it soon. But you guys will know what happens when it happens. You always do because I'll let you know. So on to what I've been doing with the car. I've just been trying to get some wiring straightened out, guys. Um, figuring stuff out with the Holly as far as how to program my nitrous, my two-step, all that. I've actually got the wiring side of it uh, pretty much done out here. You can see where I've been using my label maker to label, label wires. Uh, this is my solid state relay, relay for uh, the first stage of nitrous. I just actually zip tied this relay in for the purge that should be here uh, tomorrow actually. Uh, it's scheduled to be delivered Monday. So right now what I'm doing is I'm in here you know running some switches to a temporary little switch panel you guys might recognize that that's actually the same switch panel that's the one that i built in project steppenwolf that used to be in the ashtray well i'm just wiring it up in here temporarily because one of the other cool features of that holly dash that i'm wanting is the virtual switches so you know, you can actually have like touch screen switches to turn things on and off so you don't have to have all these wires running everywhere. So, you know, yet again, there's a third reason I want it, guys. I want it so, you know, I can just reach across through my steering wheel or behind my steering wheel and, you know, turn stuff on and off and, you know, like the different stages of nitrous, the purge. Uh, I can do all that with the touch screen. I don't have to have a big, huge switch panel to do all that, but... For now, I'm, I'm trying to get a temporary solution to get this thing going for Saturday. Um, you can see back up under here, I'm just wiring, you know, all this is running through the holly. So all I've got to do is run the input to the holly as grounds and then, you know, ground that switch out. So I got me a little bus bar. I'm going to be hooking it up to my, my, uh, my ground lug on the firewall behind the carpet there getting that all wired up. Of course, the nitrous solenoids are already plumbed and hooked up up there. They're already wired to the holly unit, everything. Uh, pretty much all I have left to do with the nitrous system is get my bottle mounted here and run my first nitrous line from the bottle up to the front of the car. Now, when we get the second stage, you, you might notice I got my bottle a little offset because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run two bottles. So when we put the second stage in, we're gonna have the other bottle mounted right here next to this one, and it's gonna have its own dedicated line. So uh, I've already figured out, you know, this is where the bottle's gonna go. I got that all mounted in there. Um, I've just, really all I got left to do is get under there, drill four holes for the mounting brackets, and drill a hole to pass my, uh, my nitrous line through. And as I always do, like I've showed you in other videos, guys, I'm just going to zip tie it to the fuel lines and follow the fuel line rounding up and to the nitrous solenoid or to the purge solenoid, rather. Speaking of purge solenoids, I want to kind of talk to you guys about that. I know a lot of you guys keep saying, hey, why don't you just purge it through the motor? Or, you know, I know all kinds of people who purge through the motor. Guys, that's just not something that I want to do, okay? I don't want to purge a 250 shot. Uh, through this 300,000 mile engine. Would it hurt it? Quite possibly, quite possibly not. I mean, we'll never know because I'm not gonna fucking do it. I mean, it's that simple. Um, I would rather just do my little redneck purge like I've showed you guys in the past where we take the line loose and purge it or do the right thing, which I've already done and order a purge, you know, a purge uh, valve to put on it. So that's what we're gonna do. 
I'm not purging a 250 shot through my engine. I damn sure when I add the second kit, I'm not gonna be purging a 500 shot through this fucking engine. Um, you do what you wanna do, uh, that's up to you. It's your vehicle, but me personally, I prefer not to do it that way. I will not do it that way. Please stop commenting telling me to purge through the damn motor. <laughs> now that my little rant's over with, uh, back to this guys, uh, over here, I've got a button for my two-step. This is also a trans brake button. Now, I do not have a trans brake right now, but guess what? I went ahead and wired it up for the trans brake. I've already got it input as trans brake on the Holly in uh, IO harness over there. So we've got a trans brake in. Uh, we've got a trans brake out labeled. But for the time being, what's going to happen, since there's no trans brake hooked up, this is just going to function as a two-step so you know while i'm foot braking it i can set this wherever i want i can just hold this button and it's going to two-step i can put my foot to the floor right now i've got it set at 3200 but we'll see where it starts pushing through the brakes pushing through the converter and basically what's going to happen is i'm going to let go of this button and let off the brake at the same time my foot's already going to be to the floor and uh car should take off works well that was a lot of smoke but that was a cold start two-step guys so it didn't uh <laughs> the the fueling wasn't quite right on that but the two-step is working um i'm gonna let it warm up and and try it again once it's warmed up but this is the tack what i'm planning on doing uh just for now until i get the holly dash is i'm just gonna mount the tack right under here and hook it up uh, like I said, guys, I'm just sick of trying to get these stock gauges to work right. The oil pressure gauge is being an ass. Um, I never hooked up the speedometer, but if I get that Holly dash, I won't have to worry about it because it actually comes with a GPS antenna, uh, you know, for the speedometer function on it. So, and you guys can see the reason I can't fit the seven inch dash right here. The steering column the way this all comes together it just physically will not fit as a matter of fact the little six inch dash i'm probably still gonna have to cut away a little bit of my my bezel there to get it to sit right in the middle where i can see it through the steering wheel but for now this tack right here ought to get me by uh, i'm actually going to mount that probably tonight get it wired up uh, you can see what i'm doing here with the switch panel from steppenwolf you know, I've already got the arm switch hooked up. The only other thing I'm hooking up on here is the uh, the purge button. I was gonna try to hook the purge button up to my cruise control stuff since the wiring was still in. I haven't removed it yet, but I got out here with a multimeter and uh, you know, I just, I couldn't get a 12 volt signal out of any of the wires. So I just said, screw it. I went ahead and pulled me another run of wires. This is gonna go to my little purge button there and go out to the solenoid that I just showed you on the firewall. And basically the way this is gonna be is I'm just going to zip tie all these wires together and put a copious amount of tape on the backside so nothing grounds out. So I can just throw it in the console here when I'm racing, I will pull it out and it will actually wedge right there. Um, you know, once I get a little more tape on it, it's just gonna wedge right there while I'm racing. So I can just, you know, activate the nitrous or hit the purge from the driver's seat you know back on the purge thing guys i love getting suggestions from you but it's just when 10 different people keep suggesting something over and over and i keep answering the comments and i don't know if you guys just don't see that i've answered you or that you know you just don't get it through your head the first second or third time but um you know, there's some things I just don't want to do. I mean, it's that simple. And if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. I mean, 
sometimes you guys suggest stuff and I love it and I roll with it and I thank you and I give you shout outs and give you credit on the channel and everything. Uh, I always try to give people credit when they help me out. But guys, just because you tell me to do something, five, as a matter of fact, when you tell me to do something in the comments like five or six times in a row, um, that's gonna make me even less likely to do it. <laughs> if I wasn't gonna do it before, I damn sure ain't gonna do it then because you're aggravating me. Uh, but anyway, speaking of shout outs, I wanted to give another shout out once again to Phil Bethauser. So you guys know we've been having an issue with, I'm pretty sure it was cylinder one here. Well, the coil that was on cylinder one was all jacked up. They'd hit it with the tow motor at the uh, at the wrecking yard where I got the engine from, so it was broken. A bunch of the fins were broken stuff. And then also the harness had a bunch of exposed wires where you know they had hit too. So I was actually talking to Phil about some fuel pumps he had. And he had a pair of brand new Walbro 450s. So I thought, you know, I don't know if those are gonna get me all the way as far as I wanna go on E85, but they ought to get me damn close. Maybe just add a third one to them down the line. So we worked out a deal. Um, I bought the Walbro 450s off of them, and by bought, I mean I pretty much stole because <laughs> he was gonna give them to me, and I'm like, man, I gotta give this guy something because he's always sending me stuff. So we finally came to an agreement on a price, and he happened to have a whole set of these heat sink uh, round truck coils. So he not only sent me the two Walbro 450 pumps, but he also sent me seven truck coils. Uh, one of them he had was broke, similar to mine. Um, and he sent me both the harnesses, which worked out great. I've not put this one on yet, but it worked out great because like I said, I had bare wires on this harness. And then over here on this harness, the clip is actually broke on the connector. So, you know, it just, it this these wires just flop around. So I'm gonna swap that other harness out over here with this harness so I can actually clip that connector in and it's not just flopping everywhere. So once again, thanks again, Phil. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Guys, Phil has helped so much with this build, uh, not just with parts, but bouncing ideas off of them and stuff. And it's the same thing with Zane, with uh, uh, with Josh Watson. I mean, you, those guys have been great. All of y'all have been great, really. I mean, a lot of you guys, I don't want you to think I'm just like <laughs> complaining and being like, don't suggest anything, because a lot of your suggestions I have used. Um, but yeah guys just don't don't keep grinding the same thing over and over please anyway what i'm gonna do right now i'm not even sure how long this video is yet i just wanted to give you guys a little update what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna go ahead and finish the wiring that i'm doing in there and i'll give you guys a quick look at it uh when i get it finished up everything is hooked up now let's see the nitrous is hooked up all i have left is to run the purge uh, this is actually my purge wire right here. So I just need to hook up my purge, run my line from the back, mount my bottle, and uh, after that, it's just about dialing stuff in. You can see I got my little switch panel made here. So I can just take it, put it inside here when I'm not using it. When I'm racing, I'll just put it out here. Close that. That arms the nitrous. There's my purge good to go so that's it guys just a little project update and letting you guys know that this coming saturday uh me and ray should be up at english mountain as long as the weather's good now, now i've got to go in here and watch a movie with the kids because they just got back from their grandparents so i'm gonna do that you guys get out in the garage get something done and i'll see you next time here on bad luck garage